Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Fishing Saskatchewan. It's late November and we're kicking off our ice fishing season this year up at beautiful Piperal Lake. The temperature is not going to cooperate with us. It's uh, going to be about minus 20 for the next three days. Uh, we're supposed to be getting some uh, some snow and some blowing wind, so wind chills uh, upwards uh, to minus 30. So we're going to be out here toughing it out and uh, doing the best we can. Yeah, you know, uh, end of November, we we're hoping for better weather. It's not, but the fishing can still be really good, so stay tuned, folks. You're watching Fishing Saskatchewan, brought to you in part by The Fishing Hole, North Sask Farm Equipment, and Alumacraft. Five all the way to 17. That's nice. Ice safety is paramount, especially when you're out fishing in early ice situations. Um, throughout the winter, the ice freezes at different levels, especially early ice. Uh, the ice will, will freeze thicker at shore before it freezes out in the middle of the lake. Uh, it'll freeze differently around points and humps and definitely uh, deep drop-offs. So you want to take some care when you're first getting on the ice and the best way to do that is to drill some pilot holes. Drill a few holes, um, maybe 20 yards from shore or if, if you know the lake then you know where, where the deep water is. You want to make sure that you're drilling your pilot holes in less than five feet of water just to, to make sure that it's safe and you're not going to fall through in 20 feet of water. When you drill your pilot holes, you want to have some type of measuring device to see the thickness of the ice. Um, I, I like to walk on anything uh, from four to six inches. I try not to get on ice that's any thinner than that. I know a lot of guys, they like to push the envelope and, and that uh, recipe for a disaster when it comes to early ice. So do your best. Take your time getting on the ice. Don't rush out there uh, because safety is uh, the number one thing when it comes to early ice fishing. Yes! Uh, nice one! Yeah. Caught that one on a deadline with a minnow. Well, we were in what, five feet of water here? Five, five Yeah, five feet of water here. I mean, we're marking them out there quite a bit, but we've got a couple of hits just on a yeah. minnow sitting on there the bottom. Go. And I was just talking about drilling a couple of holes kind of in a little bit more shallow. But I wasn't thinking quite this shallow. Yeah, well, but here they are. Beautiful little pinch beautiful of little fall squeak. colors on her. Yeah, so yeah, I'm it's still a little bit dark. Pretty new to trout fishing, so is this uh, an eater size or is this a little too small yet? That's probably a good eater size for, for a splake. That's, yeah, that'd be a good one to go in the pan. A nice little, we'll, we'll get them bigger than this, but yeah. I would say probably in this lake, this is probably pretty close to average size too. Yeah, yeah. Nice. good stuff. What a nice fish. Beauty. So we can get that one back. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, fish. All right. Back in the hole. Camel clutch. <laughs> Beautiful. Nice. Nice, one. nice work, Steve. First one. High five, right. Beauty. Time to reload. Yeah. Oh. Fish. There you go. Nice. This one I don't think is quite as dark no. as the other one. Nice. Not bad, man. Not bad. I just saw the pink and then yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah, you got there right on time. I gotta unfreeze my right here. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Right ahead. 
Another, another plate. plate. Maybe a little better. Scrappy. Oh, it's a little bit bigger, Splake. Yeah. That's a nice one. That's a nicer one. Yeah. Nice fish. Oh, it's right there. Nice. There we go. I love the markings on them. Yeah, beautiful. And you can tell it's got that slightly forked tail. Yeah. So you know it's not a brook trout, but it's got the a little red markings and nice just beautiful fish get this boy back yeah apparently five feet of water is happening i think i'm uh, gonna move in right on see you buddy good job nice work got the hot hand in the hot yeah. hole beauty yeah i'm gonna take a few seconds to beat up and get this guy back going beauty <laughs> Top hook. Uh, almost, eh? Another splake. Another splake. Nice. So what did we catch that guy on? That was on a pickerel rig and minnows, which was what was suggested by the lodge owner. Again, a nice little pound and a half splake. Nice. Really nice fish. We've got to get this guy back before the ice freeze up though. Yeah. And that was just set on a deadline, sitting still. Yep. Seems to be the ticket. This is probably six feet of water here. So. Seems like they're liking that really slow, dead presentation. Really slow. Like I've seen, we looked down the holes and we could see the fish swimming around. And as soon as you move the hook, they seem to scatter a bit. A little skittish. Yeah, so maybe they'll maybe they'll get a bit more aggressive, but that's working, so we'll keep doing it. Yeah, right old school fishing. Again, you'll see the marks come in on the Vexlar and it's about two or three feet off the bottom and you know that those fish are more aggressive and you can actually get them to chase your lure and I'm using a little white tube jig I mean nothing fancy we've been catching all our fish on pretty basic techniques but uh, once you get them chasing you get a really good chance of getting a bite oh there's one and those are the ones that are they're cruising by pretty quick and you can see he's chasing Jig of a lure and see if I can get, oh. Sometimes they want it and sometimes they just don't. But the good news is they're here and they're active. Oh, Neil. You had a good couple of quacks on it. Nice. And a nice light one. Yeah. Nice. We've caught a lot of splake, not necessarily today. I mean, we've caught a few today, but we've caught a lot of splake here in the past, and that's pretty typical size and shape. Nice and you, good day. You catch a lot of oh. nice little trout. Yeah. yeah. Boy, he's here, here feisty. Yeah. I think I've <laughs> yeah. lost two right at the top of the hole just because they're so feisty up yeah. the hole. Yeah. 
Just hit the ice and the hook pops out. There it goes. Right, yeah. Awesome. Good stuff, Neil. On the board. That's your first flake. That's my first flake. Oh, nice. Yes. Oh, boy. Another one for the list. <laughs> Time to go bait up. Today's ice anglers need to be efficient, and HT offers a huge selection of premium ice tackle designed to meet virtually every application. Whether you fish bluegills, crappie, perch, stocked trout, whitefish, walleyes, pike, or lake trout, HT has what it takes to make you consistently successful. Nothing beats ice fishing, nothing. You wouldn't be stupid enough to risk it all on a losing hand. So why risk it all out on the water? Don't gamble with your life. Wear your life jacket. Hey folks, well I'm going to show you guys uh some of the tools that we're using to catch these trout here at Pipperel. Um, number one, obviously, we've got the Vexilar units out. We don't hit the ice without them. That's the most essential tool you can have out here on the ice. With these trout, they're well known for going on uh, good runs. So having a good reel with a good drag system. We've got the AccuCast uh, six ball bearing reel. Great drag system. It lets that fish run when it needs to. We're using a lot of Pretty common stuff that you probably already have in your ice fishing tackle box. Jigging minnows, pretty standard selection of jigs and jigging spoons. Um, those all work great. Stuff that we commonly use for walleye and panfish work great out here. So what we've got on this one, for example, is just two small J hooks. Uh, we're also using circle hooks. We've got a couple of split shot at the bottom for weight and then we're gonna attach different type of bait on each one. Another thing that we're having a lot of success with is a tube jig. Now you guys have seen this before when we uh, fish lake trout, uh, we use the same idea. White tube, a little piece of bait on the bottom. Fantastic, especially in clear water like this, the trout can see that from a long way away. We've got a little bit of artificial bait, Berkeley power bait. Uh, this is fantastic trout bait. You can get it in pellets. Put that on your hook. Uh, marshmallows, very common as well. Minnows, which we've actually been having probably the majority of our success on this. You don't have to have a lot of sophisticated uh, equipment uh, catching trout. Uh, you can use the basic stuff. We've got lots of fish on uh, simple bait rigs, on picker rigs, and minnows. You can come out here with very, very minimal gear and have fantastic success. So there are so many stock trout waters in Saskatchewan. Get some simple stuff. Don't make it too hard on yourself. Go out, give it a try. Oh, Smitty, Smitty. Looked like it was good. Good hustle. <laughs> I got some stuff here. Given the struggle we have with this guy, we did freeze his eyes up a little bit and he got his hook pretty deep. We are gonna take one in for supper. I think that's a good candidate right there. That's a great candidate. One Beauty little fish. fish. Oh, it's a brown, isn't it? No, that's a rainbow. These are dark. Yeah. Still got its fall color. Jeez, that's a nice one, Neil. Oh. Come on, hook. There we go. 
That's our first rainbow of the day. <laughs> Baby, relax, relax. I know, I know. And you can see wow. how dark stone with the fall colors, eh? Yeah. Look at that cheek on them. A little bit of a kite, eh? Yeah, look at that. That is a gorgeous fish, Neil. Thank you. And your first rainbow, too. My first eh? rainbow. <laughs> That's a real nice one. Sweet. Real nice one. All right, I'll throw her back here. Absolutely. Oops, all right. Steve, you say that's probably a little bit bigger it's than average here? For the a rainbow? A little, bit, little bit bigger than average. You're looking good. at probably a two pound average. That one was pushing three. Yeah, that was a nice three, fish. Three really nice change. fish. Nice. Yeah. Well, my homemade rig I just made up. Uh, yeah. A couple uh, Gamagatsus. Split shot on the bottom. Yeah, just kind of set up like almost like a drop shot rig. Exactly. Got a tiger. Tiger? I think so. Yeah, for sure. For sure a tiger. So that's a cross between a brook and a brown trout. But very cool, that one was in shallow, hit a minnow. Nice. Yeah. Very nice fish. That's the first tiger I've seen. There we go. That feels nice. nice. Looks like a good one. We'll see. He uh, he really smacked us. Looks like he's got some weight to him. And well, I might have to stick my hand down there to get this one. Here he comes. Close. Oh, careful, careful. Nice rainbow. Real nice rainbow. Let me twist it up a little bit. Oh, careful, that hooks in the tail there. <sighs> got him. Great. The hook came out of the mouth and the second hook got him in the tail. I bet you that's exactly what happened. I'll cover his eyes up here. Yeah. And that's what you're going to get in these stock lakes up north yeah. here. That's a good average size rainbow that uh, that you'll get out of Pipperel and you probably, like you said, a lot of the lakes in the area. Took her hard though. Yeah. He's got a little bit of a kipe as well. Yeah, yeah look at that. Bit. Yeah. Beauty. Just starting. Well, should we get her back? Absolutely. You betcha. All right. Nice trout. Oh, let's go. Oh. Oop. She's there. gone. There, there you go. go. Oh. Nice, man. Nice work. Good, good job. Steve. What a nice fish. That was really pretty. Another splake. Another splake. Nice one. Beautiful colors on them. Nice. Another. That was that dead line there? Yeah. Perfect size little splake. Got it? We got it. Okay. Oh, that's a big one. Well, it took the whole thing, eh? Yeah. Feels like you got some weight. A little bit, yeah. I got a good look at him. Oh, nice colors. Look at this tiger. Oh! oh. oh. oh no! Oh, no! That was a big one? Yeah, nice tiger. And it had yeah. its fall colors. Oh, it was gorgeous. Did it have the fall colors? Oh, yeah. it was so beautiful. I even risked my life to try and grab the reel. Oh, that thing what? was almost going in the hole. And that's it. This time of year, you got such a short column of ice. Yeah, I guess. If this is late in the year, you got two feet of ice, it's up that hole. Yeah. It's not turning around and going back down. But oh, I tried. We got this. Oh, man. I just went to hoist him. He's right at the top of the hole. Hoist him out, and the line snaps. Oh man, that was a beauty fish. It was. The hook's gone. Oh yeah, it snapped oh, yeah. it off, yeah. Hey, thanks a lot for joining us on this episode of Fishing Saskatchewan. We had a great time up here at Pipra Lake. Caught lots of trout and a few different species. Big thanks to Richard and Shelly at Rainbow Lodge on Pipra Lake. Uh, they hosted us and it was uh, great accommodations and our fishing spot was 50 yards from our cabin. Until next time folks, we'll see you on the water. Fishing Saskatchewan, brought to you in part by The Fishing Hole. Get hooked at The Fishing Hole. North Sask Farm Equipment, Highway 16 North Battleford.
Come see us for all your recreational and agricultural needs. And Alumacraft, built by fishermen for fishermen. Oh, tired from reeling in that rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> I am at three species. Not that, you know, we're a competitive crew, I guess you could say. <laughs> oh, thought I was going through there. <laughs> 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 <laughs>